On the previous video concerning 10 conscious war films that have been unfairly overlooked by the public, Jean Renoir is mentioned as one of the greatest French filmmakers and his masterpiece La Grande Illusion is briefly inspected and presented as a prime example of humanistic anti-war art. Renoir, however, is nowadays perhaps revered for a quite special work by the name of The Rules of the Game, a film most highly regarded by both critics and filmmakers alike and hailed as one of the best ever today, though like many works in art history, its unveiling was met with derision and contempt. Therefore, one naturally may ask, from where does this prestige sprouted, what supports this posterior revaluation, and what distinguishes the film to the point of earning such lofty recognition? Shortly put, The Rules of the Game is a farcical comedy of manners, disguised as a deceptive and unrequited love triangle of sorts with a couple of accessory threads that exposes the decadent affectation and immorality of the French bourgeoisie and upper class just before World War II. Renoir is influenced by the ever-inspiring and bottomless spring of classical French comedy and does it with much finesse and prickly insight, an enterprise that won't ever feel groundless when your nation's literary tradition includes stalwarts like Molière, Corneille, Racine, Beaumarchais and Marivaux. His depiction of class characters is acerbic yet faithful in its essence to the referring epoch and careful not to delve into full caricature territory. This explains why so many people were rubbed the wrong way upon the film's premiere, for as La Rochefoucauld so deftly puts it in his maxims, we enjoy seeing through others, but not being seen through. And Renoir himself points out, when commenting on the film viewer's outrageous response, that the people in the audience recognized themselves, though he maintained until the end that he meant to be gentle in his commentary. In any case, it's fair to say that this had a role on the film's bombing at the box office for sure, a surprise of the highest order given that Renoir was already an illustrious and much respected director, with an assortment of successes like The Grand Illusion and The Human Beast. More serious even by the fact that the movie was, by then, the most expensive French film ever made. Despite the disdain it garnered by audiences and critics, much of it no doubt due to their political tenets as well, the film has a comic tone that is ingeniously fanciful and fun, while never bawdy, rooting its characters in credible ground, even more so when in sporadic moments they confess their self-doubt, the uncertainty of their decisions or the assurance of their reprehensible outcome. Other than Octave, who is played by Renoir, and which is himself dubious in his moral stature, despite bearing an apparently reasonable nature, most other characters have objectionable traits that define their behavior and attitudes. The main characters, such as Christine, André, the Marquis, Lisette, Octave or Genevieve, are rendered as flawed humans that may have genuine or well-intentioned capabilities, but are perhaps prevented from performing honorably, mostly by the rotting social setting in which they're mired in. They meander within a backdrop that is morally corrupt and frivolous, which has made them oblivious, petty, narcissistic, prejudiced, and ensnared them in a show of pretense that is outwardly ruled by appearances, rules and etiquette, the etiquette that is at some point mentioned by one of the maids as bearing fundamental, almost sacred importance. The rules of the game are therefore not just the aspects and procedures of the hunting activity in which the guests are involved for carefree, albeit cruel, pleasure, but are also the set of principles that these characters follow so as to be able to participate and perform on this exclusive high-class stage play. In an ironical twist of fate, these rules that Andrea uses to object against Christine's suggested eloping will be responsible for his own demise. In technical terms, the rules of the game impresses by being one of the first films to consistently employ the use of deep focus, which translates to large depth of field where most elements inside the frame are sharp, a technique that is most conspicuous in shots featuring outdoors environment, for instance on the hunt sequence or in scenes set in the large corridors and halls of Marquis Chateau. At the same time, the cinematography features also frequent, if subtle, camera movement that was unusually sophisticated by standards at the time, efficiently reinforcing the power of longer take duration adopted, the end result being quite innovative and unique. Sound-wise, the movie also holds a complexity that challenged the capture and mixing ability of the era, as it presents sequences with multiple sound sources of diverse tone and texture simultaneously, while avoiding in the end the mushy clutter that could turn into in the hands of less talented or careful technicians. The rules of the game is responsible for having inspired countless later films featuring hunting scenes that bring about the less evident and disagreeable natures of its individuals, the most notable of which being perhaps Angelopoulos' The Hunters, a film that besides holding similar dramatic structure, also features a kind of vaudeville scene reminiscent of the rules of the game sequence in which the guests bid each other goodnight in the corridor connecting their rooms in a series of various salutations, formalities, kisses and interactions. 
As for the hunting scene itself, it's striking and somewhat haunting for its apparent presaging of the brutality of the imminent war, its eerie atmosphere stemming from its somber mood and fast editing, echoing the montage prowess so aptly enforced by Eisenstein in his classics The Strike and Battleship Potemkin. The final shot of the film bears a spine-chilling mood as well, as a tragic accident is effortlessly dealt with and tucked away with a laconic discourse by the host, and the conformed guests return to the chateau to continue their evening, their moving spectral shadows projected on the accursed estate's wall. In his last two films, Robert Bresson crafted endings that bring to mind this conclusion, a similar tone being strongly apparent in The Devil probably, whereas L'Argent bears a closer stylistic similitude. For the courage and brilliance of its satirical social commentary of French classes when Europe was at the brink of its most deadly armed conflict in history, and for the technical accomplishments, the freshness of its novel cinematic approach that would prove highly influential not only for French cinema, but for directors all over the world, The Rules of the Game has rightfully earned its classic status and recognition as one of cinema's greatest gems. If you'd like to watch it, there's a Criterion Blu-ray and DVD available comprising the reconstructed version of the film, after having been subjected to cuts and its original negative distortion during World War II, with a superb digital restoration. The link will be in the description. Also make sure to check other videos from this channel if you're interested in learning more about classic cinema of all eras and countries. Thank you and see you next time.